We have team coverage of the first winter storm of the season here in Eastern Iowa. As we start Iowa's News Now at 6, we've been talking about this for a couple of days. It is coming to fruition now. We're going to be talking to Weather First Meteorologist Rebecca Coltman and reporter Kaylee Whitlatch about the conditions out there and how you can stay safe. While many Iowans are snowed in, Governor Kim Reynolds lays out her policy priorities for the 2024 legislative session. I'm State House reporter Skylar Talal, live at the Capitol where she's speaking in minutes. Coming up, I'll give you a glimpse at what we're expecting to hear. And we'll get back to Skylar there in just a little bit, but our top story is the winter storm that has dropped up to a foot of snow in parts of eastern Iowa. Well, the first team's been talking about this the last few days, saying this could be one that dumps a lot across the area, and that is certainly happening. Heavy snow falling throughout a lot of today. There's been that winter storm warning for 91 of the state's 99 counties up until just a few minutes ago. Hitting parts of eastern Iowa particularly hard. Cedar Rapids, you see some of the scenes around there as well. Live look out on the roads. If you've been out there, you know these are some rough conditions. There's highway. I-3 to Highway 965, you see some traffic off in the distance, but otherwise this is probably good news seeing these roads as clear as they are and uh, as not full of traffic as they are right now. The DOT is not advising travel for a lot of the area, including Interstate 80. They say you shouldn't be traveling on that between Des Moines and the Illinois border right now, and we've seen a ton of crashes there uh, that are active right now, backups, and this scene comes from I-80 earlier today, an Iowa State Patrol vehicle getting hit there in Powasheet County near the Highway 21 exit. That's just east of Brooklyn. The trooper was not in the vehicle at the time. They are not hurt. They were outside helping a stalled semi and then the vehicle got hit from behind. But again, just a warning, be super careful out there. If you're driving, slow down, decrease following distance or increase your following distance. Don't do what I just said. Increase your following distance. Uh, and, and put away those distractions. Stay home again, if at all possible. We've seen near whiteout conditions, which means it's tough for anybody out on those roads. Iowa State Patrol says they've helped out with 171 crashes today throughout the state, going back to 8 a.m. yesterday. A lot of these are property damage, but 18 injuries so far, no deadly crashes so far reported by State Patrol. Overall, they've helped almost 500 drivers uh, from 8 in the morning Monday through 4 o'clock this afternoon. That is when all those numbers have been updated. A lot of the counties not recommending towing right now either. So if you do have a vehicle stuck somewhere in places like Lynn, Johnson, Benton, Iowa counties, they're probably going to stay there until things get better. That might not be until sometime tomorrow because we are seeing more closures as well. A lot of eastern Iowa school districts are either Closing entirely tomorrow. We're starting late. We've got those scrolling at the bottom of your screen as well or at iowasnewsnow.com. Not just schools, though, too. Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, Xavier, uh, Linmar have canceled classes for the day, but a lot of other places, too. Local libraries shutting down earlier today. Iowa City, Marion, Hiawatha, a lot of churches, mobile pantries uh, closing for the day as well. Unity Point, even, closing down some urgent care sites for the day because of the winter weather. and. Case and again, something we've been talking about for a while now. We said this could be a major impact type of storm, and we are certainly seeing every bit of that as we get into the night, and there's still a little more coming. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, the snow, obviously not over here in eastern Iowa yet, but of course, yeah, the setup with things that we had, a lot of moisture leading to some heavy, wet snow across the area, and of course, the winds that we've seen throughout much of this morning into the afternoon and evening now creating whiteout conditions in some areas, as well as uh, leading to blowing and drifting of that snow as well. Most of eastern Iowa right now with completely covered roadways, as you can see that, of course, we do have some of those areas where travel is not advised right now. We'll give you a live look from our Coralville sky cam right now. You can see traffic just off in the background there of Interstate 80 a little bit slow. We've got numerous crashes uh, near the Tiffin and Iowa City area. 32 degrees right now with those uh, breezy winds still out of the northwest around 20 to even 25 miles per hour. You can see though this system is starting to push its way off towards the east and will be exiting the area here over the next couple of hours. Places like Waterloo, New Hampton, even up near Decorah. You're not seeing any snow right now and just cloudy skies. This winter storm warning will continue until a little bit later on tonight, but you can see already portions of western central Iowa now out of that and things will be quieting down here as we go over the next couple of days. We do have more snow chances to talk about and we'll discuss that a little bit more coming up here in just a few minutes. Case and thank you. And again, we talked about the road conditions out there. Weather first meteorologist Rebecca Coltman live in Cedar Rapids right now. Rebecca, uh, thanks again for staying up late. You've been up for a while now tracking this since this morning, but Normally we'd have the road warrior out there. We've had people in this building that have worked in this market for better part of a decade around Eastern Iowa. They say this is as bad as the road conditions as they can remember. That's why we've got the road warrior parked for the night. We want to practice what we preach. 
things are, we've seen all the maps, we've seen some of the, the DOT cams. It's downright nasty out there in some spots. Yeah, and I mean, I've been here for eight years, which is not a super long time, but this is the most significant winter event that I have seen in this area. We do not tend to see storms like this that drop this much snow in a short amount of time, and this prolonged event has led to the issues out there on the streets, and we had whiteout conditions being seen. I had emergency managers calling and saying, please tell people to stay off the streets or at least just slow down because they've been seeing that becoming the issue and what's then happening is that we have this uh, marker of travel not advised and that is because we're seeing so many crashes that it's becoming dangerous or very very difficult for crews to get out there and help things out and because there's crashes well that ends up then slowing the plows down so they cannot then clear those roads we have one of those issues ongoing in on I-80 earlier we had a crash that was uh, blocked the road westbound near Oxford for about four or five hours. Now that is around Tiffin where traffic is slowed down quite a bit. There are emergency crews that are on the scene as well, and this is westbound on Tiffin where uh, this is backed up toward Coralville uh, and could be for miles here. And we've been seeing just some of these cameras where it's like a parking lot, and that is the combination of the snow, but also some iciness that's developed and also the wind that is blowing blowing and will continue to blow, leading to blowing and drifting. And we're seeing these issues, especially on the east west roads, and that will persist through the night. We will talk more about, uh, of course, that potential tonight with your full forecast in a bit. But here at Broadcast Park, meteorologist Rebecca Kopelman, I was News Now. Thank you, Rebecca. And of course, all this happening is Governor Reynolds is getting ready to give her condition of the state from the Capitol. So we turn back to Iowa's News Now State House reporter Skylar Tlaw, who's live there. We're waiting for the governor to start talking any minute now. Uh, a lot on the Republican agenda here is they again have full control of the State House here. Skylar, what are we expecting from the governor uh, any minute now? Yeah, Mitch, Governor Kim Reynolds actually just started giving her condition of the state address, and she started off with mentioning the shooting at Perry High School and remembering the victims. But it's also a chance for us to hear for the first time her 2024 legislative priorities. Now, we do know that she's calling on more state income taxes, similar to what House and Senate Republicans are wanting. Reynolds has also said Iowans can expect a review and possible changes to Iowa's area education agencies. Now, she doesn't plan on closing any of the nine agencies agencies across the state, but does say there's significant proficiency gaps among students with disabilities that need some improvement. We're also expecting the governor to do something with the recommendation to cut cut or converge the more than 100 boards and commissions. Now that review came out of the government reorganization law, and there are also a few health policies Reynolds didn't get across the finish line last session that we could see come up again this year. Things like over the counter birth control and adding parental leave for state employees. Now following the shooting at Perry High School, like I just mentioned, Republicans are calling on additional support for mental health. So that's another thing that we're most likely going to hear tonight. And I'll have a full breakdown um, of her policy policy priorities on Iowa's News Now at 9 and 10. Live in Des Moines, Skylar Talal, Iowa's News Now. Thank you, Skylar. And if you'd like to watch the full condition of the state address from Governor Reynolds, we've got that streaming live right now on the Iowa's News Now Facebook page and the Iowa's News Now YouTube page. We're streaming the full PBS broadcast on uh, both those sites. And again, Skylar will have that recap at 9 and 10. After the break here on Iowa's News Now, again, back to that winter weather and the storm that's hitting eastern Iowa. Ideally, you stay inside through it all. That's not the case, though, not reality for a lot of folks. I'll tell you what to keep in mind if you do have to head out. Back on Iowa's News Now as we continue our live team coverage of the first winter storm of the season. Iowa's News Now reporter Kaylee Whitlatch live in Cedar Rapids tonight. Winds still picking up a little bit there, Kaylee. We were hoping they'd calm down after 5 o'clock, but you've seen what the roads are like out there. The wind's not helping anything either, but the fact is not everybody can just ride this out at home. People have to go out and drive in this stuff. You've been talking to Iowa State Patrol about what people should do if staying home is not an option. That's right, Mitch. Trooper Bob 
Conrad says that there should be precautions that you take if you have to travel on these roads for the safety of yourself and for the drivers around you. He says there should be a good amount of distance between yourself and the vehicle in front of you and you should have some supplies in your car if you should be in an accident uh, like a blanket or a winter coat and also a fully charged cell phone in case you need to call 911 if you find yourself in a crash or if you happen to see one on the road. Trooper Conrad says that if your car goes into a ditch or if it goes off the roadway do not panic and contact the police. He says if you're going somewhere take your time and if you're meeting someone let them know that you're on your way or if you're running behind. We are seeing road conditions that are 100% snow and ice. This wet snow, you know, underneath is kind of slushy. So speed is the biggest thing. If you do have to be out, slow down your car. It's just whatever speed you feel safe and you can maintain your car. Now, just because you have a vehicle's four-wheel drive and it can get going well doesn't mean it can stop well. Trooper Conrad does recommend, though, that if at all possible, you stay home or if you have the option to work from home. Live in Cedar Rapids, Kaylee Whitlatch, Iowa's News Now. And you can see here on radar and satellite, we still have some light snow falling here in Cedar Rapids, as well as down to Iowa City and portions of eastern Iowa. But this system working its way towards the east and things going to be wrapping up over the next couple of hours. But travel conditions still likely going to be difficult into tomorrow. We'll talk more about that coming up in your full weather first forecast after the break. Back on Iowa's News Now, we go live to Des Moines tonight. Governor Kim Reynolds just a few minutes into her 2024 condition of the state speech, laying out priorities for this legislative session that just started yesterday. Let's take a listen to the governor. The basis and taking special education off autopilot, where it has been stuck for far too long. So once again, let's drive transformational change and do what's right for our children. Governor Reynolds there with a, an applause break and you saw the blue ribbon on her lapel there again a few days removed from the shooting at Perry. We've seen those ribbons on a lot of people over the last few days. If you want to continue to watch the state, uh, the condition of the state address, uh, we do have that streaming on the Iowa's News Now Facebook and YouTube pages uh, or uh, at iowasnewsnow.com. We've got links there as well. Now, the snowstorm in Iowa not stopping presidential candidates from hitting the campaign trail six days out now from the caucuses next Monday. Nikki Haley making her pitch to voters in Waukee today to try to move away from Donald Trump on the ballot. The only way we're going to win the majority of Americans is if we go forward with a new generational leader that leaves the negativity and the baggage in the past and goes forward with the solutions for the future. Don't complain about what happens in a general election if you don't play in this caucus. It matters. Haley has a countdown to caucus event in Cedar Rapids Thursday night at the Olympic Southside Theater. You can RSVP for that online if you're interested. Not the only one campaigning today as well. The first lady of Florida, Casey DeSantis, talking to voters in a tumble this morning. Of course, her husband, Ron, on the ballot. DeSantis and Haley are the only two candidates expected at tomorrow's CNN GOP debate on the campus of Drake University. Donald Trump was the other candidate to qualify, but of course, he hasn't shown up to any debates so far. Not expected to participate for that. He's got a Fox News town hall uh, in Des Moines as well. Another politician not letting the snow get to them, Vivek Ramaswamy, posting this on social media around 3 this morning. He was stuck in the snow in northwest Iowa. He said they got stuck and some Iowans helped and got their SUV out of there. Took him five hours to get back to Des Moines, but was still able to host events this morning, including one in Coralville. And we continue our Weather First team coverage back outside to Rebecca, who's tracking everything and bringing a little more in perspective on just how much snow we've seen, Rebecca. This is what you guys have been forecasting the last few days, but now it's here and we're really getting an idea historically of just how long it's been since we've seen something like this here. Yeah, and you know, Mitch, you grew up here. I don't think that you've probably seen a snowstorm quite like this in your lifetime in terms of a two day event producing this much snow. And we had some question marks about the system. We knew there could be some high amounts, but what happened was we had temperatures around 32 degrees. This created this very just dense snow that was uh, very compacted. And we ended up still seeing with that 10 to 13 inches being reported. That's the most snow in a two day event since 1973. 
Now, for some more perspective on that, Cedar Rapids averages just around nine inches for the entire month of January. So when we were watching the storms come in, we knew that there was going to be a lot of energy with it. There was going to be a lot of moisture as well. And uh, if you can uh, just, if we can come back and uh, just take a look at the snow and how quickly it compacts, uh, this is that kind of snowman making snow that came down very quickly at times. We were talking one to at times two inches per hour snowfall rates. Not something that we see that often. And especially when we have those warmer temperatures, uh, it was pretty impressive because even as the snow is compacting, we still have seen these very impressive and large amounts. So uh, this has certainly been one for the record books. There's still snow falling. We have to wait to see the official totals to see really where it ranks, but certainly something that we have not seen in about 50 years around here. So quite an impressive storm. Meteorologist Casey Fricks, of course, continues our Weather First team coverage on this winter storm, the continued impacts tonight. And Casey, more snow on the way too. Yeah, that's exactly right, Rebecca. We're not out of the woods quite yet. We've still got some snow bands continuing to push through the area right now. And man, has it left scenes like this that we're seeing right now on Interstate 80. This is the backup all the way towards about US 6 and Interstate 80 there uh, from the accident that's taking place near the Tiffin area. And you can see just these lines of semi trucks that are just stopped, parked in obviously the middle of the road here, waiting for that sort of scene to get clear. And it's actually Actually gone all the way back as far as to our Coralville camera down there. Now, a lot of things have contributed to this. Of course, that wet, heavy, compactable snow that we've seen with heavy snowfall rates up near one to two inches per hour, but also the winds, which have been kind of the star of today. Wind gusts 45 to even 55 miles per hour in Olwine. That led to a whiteout conditions on the roadways, especially in those rural areas. And of course, tonight is still leading to blowing and drifting snow. The good news is this system is kind of on its last leg for right now. The heaviest of this snow has pushed its way off towards the east. We've still got snow falling and we'll likely see that over the next couple of hours, but you can see off in western and central Iowa right now things are clear and actually those winter storm warnings that were out there have now been expired. Let's talk about those snowfall totals that we've actually seen from today. Reports coming in from the Cedar Rapids metro area over a foot of snow. It looks like we even have a 15 inch report uh, out of Johnson County there. So you can just see the amount of snow that fell not just here in eastern Iowa, but of course all across the state as well. You can see over in central Iowa reports of eight, nine and even 10 inches over there as well. The thing is, is even though that the snow is going to be ending tonight, we're likely going to see issues in terms of travel into the morning there tomorrow. So tonight obviously don't recommend it right now. You've seen the roadways outside you low visibility, blowing snow and roads are completely covered out there. Now that snow, of course, will be done by Wednesday morning. We're likely still going to see some gusty winds, so blowing, drifting of that snow, especially in those rural areas. We might see a little bit better conditions by tomorrow afternoon into the evening, but we also have some more light snow that will actually be pushing to the area. And this isn't the end of the snow that we're likely going to see this week. We'll see some chances there, of course, Wednesday into Wednesday night, and then another storm system moving in Thursday night into Friday that could once again bring us potentially more heavy snow to the area. Let's go to predictor now and break this down for you. We'll start the clock here at eight o'clock. You can see most of that snow will be off to our east by that time. Cloudy skies throughout tonight and into the morning there on Wednesday. We should be dry during that time, but we've got more snow that will likely be pushing into the area there Wednesday evening and continue overnight. Light snow, obviously nothing heavy like we've seen from this latest storm, but it will add up to on top of what we already have with pretty bad road conditions outside. Thursday, though, a bit of a different story. The sunshine is going to come out a little bit. We'll see that some dry conditions, of course, with some cooler temperatures. And then as we head towards Friday, potentially another storm system moving into the area that could potentially bring us one more kind of round of heavy snow. Those temperatures going forward as well. A big change is right around the corner towards this weekend and early next week. We're looking at uh, some Arctic temperatures around the area here. You want to see what they look like. Here's, of course, your seven day. And yeah, we're certainly going to be looking at some of the coolest temperatures we've seen for this winter season with high into the single digits and overnight lows falling well below zero. Winter is here. Get another look at that, uh, that backup that Casey was just talking about at the 8380 interchange there near 
Ireland Avenue around the Tiffin area. You see just how big that backup is. We'll get another look at what's coming here in the next few hours in your forecast after the break. Well, the good news about the snow is that you can build a snow person of an iconic local basketball player. That is a Caitlin Clark uh, snow person put together by Iowa baseball pitching coach Sean McGrath and the kids. Says he tried to get a Brody Brecht one, Marcus Morgan, because they're Iowa baseball players. But again, you, you got to go for the brand, right? She's got a cereal out now, all sorts of other stuff. So Caitlin Clark still doing goat things, and now she exists in snow. Caitlin Crunch, that's what we saw. There you I go, you were hyped That's up right, I had that. to say it at least one time. Snow chance is ending tonight. We'll see some light snow showers tomorrow and possibly another storm system on Friday. Shout out to Rebecca back here. She's Holding been here it down. forever. She's the best.